Hey guys, Fusebox back on Brave Shadow Legends, and definitely I could use a project to get into to keep my mind clear, and tonight I've got a good one. So Judah actually has been super patient with me. Uh, we've been kind of communicating back and forth, but he's been wanting to build an unkillable clan boss team. Um, so let's just do some exploring real quick. <clears throat> I already know what I'm going to build with him because I looked at his heroes. So he definitely has hit the jackpot when it comes to building an unkillable team. We're going to be able to build a very affinity friendly, strong clan boss team to get those good rewards. So what do we got? We got two man eaters, two man eaters, definitely the place to start. <clears throat> so uh, I'm going to be using something I saw on Deadwood Jedi's uh, calculator, one of his builds that someone else came up with. I do not know his name, but that's where the credit should go. Anyways, this is the easy double man eater. So this is if you have a slow double man eater, this is probably the upgrade for that. It works on brutal nightmare and ultra nightmare. And then we're going to find out our, our DPS. <clears throat> so here's what I'm looking at. Uh, first thing I want to know is, are we booked? So we're not fully booked. There's a lot more damage potential because of that. But we do have the most important books on this man eater. We do have the most important books, I believe, on this man eater. Yeah. Uh, again, there's a little more damage potential. This one's a little further along. Uh, also, I need to know about masteries. So this one's ready to go. Would definitely want to take this out of Helm Smasher. Uh, I don't. I don't definitely don't want him in a Helm Smasher. But uh, this one's not finished. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and speed tune this. But a lot of damage is missing by simply not having War Master on both of them. I'm I'm for sure gonna use 100 gems or a free reset. Let's check real quick. Do we have a free reset? Yeah, okay, so we do. This one's going to get fixed without a doubt. Uh, the question is, if I have time, he's got a lot of energy. I may try to run Minotaur. I've got a long time. I'm going to work all night on this. Uh, there's a lot going on in my personal life, and I need this break. I actually need this project. So uh, I'll try to get that one way or the other finished because that is a lot of damage missed. But we do have Farak in the Fat. He is built out. We'll have to see about his masteries. We might can get a little more out of him. Uh, and books, I do not know. Okay, beat down. The cooldowns are there. Uh, this is unfortunate. Just a, a slightly higher chance to get decreased defense is going to be huge. Um, and this is really unfortunate. <clears throat> so we're at a 75% chance to get those HP burns and poisons. So there's a lot more damage potential here. But getting the ally attack is going to increase our damage without question. That's good. Uh, Duke the Pierce, could he be my... I think he breaks defense, right? We don't need the attack down. He's not He's not booked either. So I think we'll look... I think we're going to look here. So Geomancer, uh, he, he got nerf, buff, buff, nerf, nerf, buff, right? Now he's actually a little bit better. Uh, you actually want to put him in War Master to do better with him now, but... Uh, he does have masteries. That's great. And we can live without that. That's good. And and that's a little unfortunate, too. Uh, that three-turn cooldown would be huge to try to keep the HP burn up for, so his passive would work more often. But he does bring damage. <clears throat> so as far as options, if we're booked here, not booked, not mastery. So, okay, I haven't tried to squeeze Ninja into this yet. I feel like it could be done. <clears throat> so in the future, there's damage potential there. Brogni could bring some damage. Um, He's got masteries. And really just keeping the shield up. Brogni might be of use here. We don't have a lot of huge damage dealers for the clan boss. So Brogni might be. Now we had, there's a Fane here. I definitely think that she would be the next step up. Yeah, she definitely needs books first and needs to be built out. Fane would be on this team without question if it was me. Um, at a quick glance, with unbuilt champions, we might could squeeze in some counterattacks with, uh, I saw a Skull Crusher down here. I thought I did. There he is, Skull Crusher. He would be cool. We get some extra counterattacks. But we're going to go with the Allied Attack, two Man Eaters, Probably go ahead and use Geomancer, even though he won't be fully effective. And with what I'm seeing, I'll look a little deeper, but it, our best bet might be Brogni, just to get that extra procs of uh, Giant Slayer. So uh, how did, what is his masteries? He has Giant Slayer. 
that's probably the route we're going to go for now. So let me start working out speeds. Now, here's the thing. We've got six million silver, but luckily his speeds aren't horrible. They're like pretty close to where I'm going to try to get them. <clears throat> I'll go over that after I accomplish that. It's going to take me some time because I'm trying to push damage and speed with that amount of silver. I, I'm sure I can get the speeds right, but there will probably be a lot of room for improvement because I don't think I can roll up new gear for all these champions with six million silver. So let's see what I can come up with and I'll show you the speeds uh, again. There is on Deadwood Jedi's site uh, a version of this team using two man eaters. It looks like a pretty good version, so we'll see what we come up with. Okay, we did burn through every bit of the silver, but I did that at the point I was trying to up our damage and roll gear up. So what, what do we got? Uh, we got the speeds. That's the most important thing. There is a lot to look at here. So Brogni, he's going to be... We actually, I think, landed really good on HP, but we upped his attack a bit, and we definitely went for some crit damage and crit rate. All this can be rolled up. We went with crit damage gloves. We got his crit rate at a reasonable spot. The gear we're working with is not optimal. Uh, all this can be rolled up looking for extra rolls, but be careful. If we roll too much speed, he's going at 174 and he can go up to 178. So if we hit speed rolls rolling like anything up a little further, it, you may have to swap out some gear. Um, you know, it'd be nice in an unkillable team specifically for it. You can go with an attack chest eventually, but HP is good on him and so is attack. So we basically got him going at 174. He's got to be bet between 173 and 178. So he's ready to go. Uh, we're going to get a lot of damage out of, out of his uh, masteries. He does have Giant Slayer. Let's take a peek real quick. He's got everything he needs into Giant Slayer and a pretty basic build for getting some counterattacks. So that will work out in our advantage he should still be functional everywhere else we actually had to drop his speed and build up his damage a little bit so uh the man eaters we didn't have a lot of options as far as getting damage out of them um this one is in an attack chest which is good uh i i didn't change any gear that i didn't have to so he's still in crit rate gloves getting him in crit damage and Trying to find crit rate elsewhere is optimal, but we got to have our speed. So this is our uh, fast man eater, 219, I think dead on. Like, yeah, you can go up to like 221, 221. And we did change some speeds from uh, the Deadwood site. I'll go over that in a minute on one hero. It shows to still work on the calculator. Uh, yeah, in the end, we do have enough crit rate to be effective. Not really high crit damage, but and really low attack. Uh, the problem is these build, we don't have the gear to get high damage out of them, but 50 rounds is going to get you plenty of damage. We're going to be relying on war master procs. Hopefully we keep defense down up most of the time. One, we'll get into that in just a minute. Um, this one, I, all I did was try to get our speeds. Uh, he needs to be 215 ish. I've got him at 214. It's fine. Uh, again, low attack, but you know, reasonable crit rate we're going to have a crit rate buff coming from the fat right so it's going to help us out 30 percent boost to this not very good on crit damage but i did find crit damage necklaces they can be rolled up i believe he's still in crit rate gloves so uh we we got to do what we got to do um now geomancer is our biggest mess we don't have enough perception or accuracy gear 
to get the right speeds and the accuracy we need. He's super low accuracy. We don't have a banner. I'm going to look at your spotters team in a minute, see if there's any way to push a little better. But we'll get to that later, so stick around. But right now, uh, no accuracy banners. So he's built for very little damage. We've got some attack. Uh, we've got enough crit rate with that boost we'll get. And again, not much crit damage. He's still in crit rate gloves. Um, but the speed, 174. Again, just like Brogny, between 173, 178. Um, let me check these masteries. Right now, we're using Lore of Steel to hit this speed. So I'm going to leave him like this, and we need the accuracy to even have a chance at every now and then landing. He's not going to do near the damage he could or should. We may even sub him out. He needs books and accuracy to be effective, but he is definitely somebody you might want on this team. I, I may have to sub him out. Uh, but for acting the fat, we definitely want him on this team. We are using Lore of Steel, so I'm not going to change your masteries. Um, we'll be all right. Let me make sure there's nothing. Yeah, nothing that will affect us too bad. So this will work. Um, it does have Life Drinker. So, uh, yeah, when it comes to his build, though, I tried to actually get some. need to be rolled up and he'll be pushing 200% crit damage he'll buff himself on crit rate got some more attack on him uh one thing we had to put a flat stat chest on that's totally fine for right now we got his attack at what 2200 almost 23 uh one day an attack percentage chest here and you'll you'll be you'll be a lot of room for improvement but i had to get him close to two again we have an accuracy issue but we're, we're really close to being able to land our debuffs. We'll probably do better on Nightmare than Ultra Nightmare for now, but we will check that out. Um, so the only question I have left is, is Geomancer worth bringing without accuracy? Um, I don't have the silver to go any further with him, but I need somebody at about 175-ish on speed. Uh, no books here. Too slow. I'm just going to kind of dig for... We might bring him just for decreased defense. Just for decreased defense. I could speed him up a hair. And we could actually get some damage. Oh, she doesn't, she's missing a piece of gear. Let's see. We could go with Frozen Banshee. She needs accuracy as well. Yep, no accuracy on her. I think we're going to just try what we got. We're going to go ahead and go for Ultra Nightmare. Just to see what we can actually accomplish here so uh let me set the team up real quick and get everything ready to go if you're building this team i'll talk about the setup and i'll put a little graphic at the end because it's slightly different on nightmare ultra nightmare and brutal so on nightmare all you have to do is your your fastest man eater man eater number one he's going to have a two turn you're going to go twice and then use unkillable the other man eater will go four turns and use unkillable everything else is auto so we will have to go to turn four to get that done uh for the four turn delay on man eater two now another interesting thing is brogni bringing block buffs can make it to where you can go against that spirit affinity without any extra effort so we're gonna go we don't want to start this on auto here we go two turn delay on the fast man eater four turn delay on the second one everything else really does not matter so here we go. We're going to just A1 with the fast one. I, there's no aura that matters, so I'm putting my fast one in the center to keep up with him. We'll just A1 with this one. Now here's our second turn. Uh, we'll go ahead and see if we can get lucky. Yeah, we're going to have problems with him. We're going to wait one turn with Brogni and then put up his shield. Not a big deal if you don't do that, but it'll make sure that any affinity will not matter. Uh, here, we might as well start trying to get in some more Master Procs. We're going to do the experiment. I won't sit through the whole fight or anything, but we're going to see how it does with and without Procs. So here is our second second turn. We just do not want to go unkillable on this turn. Now, our Fast Maneater is going to go unkillable. On this turn, and we're going to go ahead and use this from Brogni. This is our first fast man eater. He's going to use unkillable. 
Can we land these? We landed an HP burn anyway. And we're going to wait. This is our... We're going to wait two more turns on this, this man-eater. Turn count three. Yeah, we're going to go through this one. And then on turn count four, we'll increase that shield so we can keep reflecting damage. So we're going to wait till turn count four. Man-eater will go unkillable. So we can actually hit auto from here. Should be able to hit auto from here. We should go unkillable right here. And if everything works, it'll be in sync. Okay. So the tune is working, which is great news. The damage is not amazing, but that's simply because we're not landing most of our abilities. Uh, we have accuracy issues. The, the gear is just not there to get all the accuracy and the speed with crit damage, attack, everything else. But we're also missing masteries. Uh, giant slayer on one of our man eaters that would account for quite a bit so we're gonna not waste this key i'll real quick re-log in and be right back okay now let's try to get some damage so i squeezed every bit of silver i could uh we're still using brogni two man eaters fracken the fat and now we're bringing in frozen banshee now fracken i did give his accuracy he still needs books he needs those books to get the the better chance of landing poisons and hp burns but he does have the accuracy and allied attack. Now we've got Frozen Banshee. Uh, I went ahead and built her out at the right speed between 173, 178. And she has plenty of accuracy. That's all she needs. That's it. She doesn't even have mastery. She'll do much better once she does have War Master. But that's totally fine because we're going to up our damage here. Um, Fracking the Fat to do all three of the Brutal Nightmare and Ultra Nightmare. I had to make sure he was exactly... 168 speed on the dot no play there uh so i did make sure he's 168 everybody else exactly what we talked about uh so let's do this so let's get in here and uh we're gonna do let's do nightmare i'll test ultra nightmare we'll show brutal but uh let's go into nightmare and find this team that we have i think i have it set up in here there we go so take it off auto on Nightmare, turn count two, you go unkillable, and then turn count three. And on turn count three, it needs to be the last move of it. So let's let's watch carefully. A1, A2, doesn't matter here. Same here. We definitely want to get poison sensitivity out so that we can get extra poisons. Go ahead and use that shield now. And that's going to give us, right there, a lot of procs of, of a Giant Slayer. This will get us more poisons out. By bringing her in for an allied attack. We are on turn count one. So we still don't want to use unkillable. So we're going to wait. Everybody else just does pretty much whatever you want. Start laying poisons. Increase that shield so we can get more uh, procs. Alright, now we're on turn count two. This is where we will go unkillable here. And try to lay HP burns and poisons. Uh, we're going to wait till the end of turn count three to go unkillable, and then we're full auto. Waiting for poison sensitivity to come back up. Whatever you do here doesn't matter, just the man eaters. So let's get to turn count three right here. Not the first move. He'll come around and get a second turn. That's when you go unkillable on the end of turn count three. So we're going to get poison sensitivity back up. And after Brogni, we go unkillable right here. So we could have just hit auto right there, but we go unkillable, hit auto. Enjoy this. Hopefully we'll get a lot more damage than before.
Okay, we have an easy two key on Nightmare. So your best plan would be two keys on Nightmare, one key on Brutal. Every single day, you'll be able to get the top chest for both. Uh, this team could easily do a two or three key on Ultra Nightmare. Uh, but the thing is, it's a high damage team, but we're in low damage gear. We don't have a lot of crit rate. We don't have masteries on Frozen Banshee. We need more books on Farrak and the Fat. There's still books to put in uh, both of the man eaters just to up their damage. Uh, in the end, you're going to want all of them in attack chests one day, but you'll have to keep the speeds pretty much exactly the same. They could all have more if they were all in crit damage gloves and found decent crit rate throughout their kit uh, while still hitting the speeds. This could do a ton of damage. It easily could probably one key nightmare and do a two key on ultra nightmare with really strong gear. But we don't have really strong gear, but this is definitely cool. I went ahead and finished this one out so you could one more key and you will have the top chest. It's affinity friendly, 100%. So on Nightmare, you want to go unkillable at the beginning of turn two, turn count two, and at the end of turn count three. Full auto from there. Let's real quick go over uh, Brutal because it's a different setup on Brutal. You'll go unkillable on the beginning of turn count one and unkillable at the end of turn count two. It just happens a little bit faster. So let's get in here and see if we can't easily one key brutal. I know we can. And then I will do a test on Ultra Nightmare just so you know where you stand as of right now. All right, so here we go. Uh, we're going to go unkillable on the beginning of turn count one and the end of turn count two. So we're just going to A1. A1, poison sensitivity, go ahead and throw out that shield, and go ahead and start laying poisons by doing our big ally attack. Now, the beginning of turn count one, we go unkillable, looking good so far, and then we just want to go unkillable with the second man eater on the end of turn count two, and then you're ready to go. So I believe you can hit auto right now. Yeah, we can hit auto right now. All right, we'll uh, skip through this pretty quick, a little quicker than the other ones, and see how we do. I'm sure we're going to one key Brutal. So you'll easily get the top chest on Brutal and Nightmare every day without worries about affinity. Right, all right. So this is definitely knocking it out of the park. Uh, brutal, is it 21 million that you got to get? Yeah. You can easily one key brutal with this easily two key ultra nightmare you just got to get 39 million so super easy to do um ultra nightmare is if we drop down to 20 is it, i think it's going to be tight you could do a four key possibly but this team is easily capable of two three keying ultra nightmare probably even easy easily doing a one key on nightmare so as you get better gear save up silver invest books into this team all right so i went really late <laughs> but uh it's a long show but there was a lot to cover hopefully this helps anybody with two managers you don't have to throw in a pain keeper or a seeker to make a pretty effective team if you've got good gear it can do a lot of damage really easy your favorite three dpsers with them and you're ready to go judah thank you so much for letting me on your account and thanks for being patient because me and you have been playing phone tag through discord for a while trying to get this done and everybody else thanks for sitting through it and until next time enjoy the grind